Good morning. Happy Saturday. I hope everybody's having a wonderful Saturday. I know I sure am. I woke up to uh, a video of Earl flapping his lime maker for about 12 minutes. That's always fun. Uh, first thing is he mistakes attorney-client privilege for the duty of confidentiality. Attorney-client privilege is an evidentiary standard, or it's an evidentiary protection. It's an evidentiary privilege. There we go. It's a privilege. Uh, what it does is it it allows the client or the attorney or both to assert a privilege against disclosure of communications between the two. So if the uh, like you'll see it a lot in depositions. Um, did anybody tell? Did anybody talk to you about the deposition today? At which point in time the opposing counsel would say, you know. Objection, I'm asserting the attorney-client privilege, and then you'd have to rephrase, okay, did did you talk about the deposition today with anyone besides your attorney? So, there you go. Yeah. The duty of confidentiality is, is basically just that. It's designed to give the client a little bit of peace of mind, knowing that they can tell their attorney whatever they need to tell their attorney, and their attorney isn't going to blab it, and if they do blab it, then there are... Uh, there are legal ramifications and legal causes of action that you can file against the attorney, etc. So that's that's one thing. Uh, the second thing is the, uh, the state bar is not going to file a protective order against the Hemings. They're not. That's not their role. Uh, this is uh, once you file a complaint, it becomes the state bar versus. Krista Hemming, and it'd be the state bar versus Felipe. I think they title it like Inri the Matter of. Irmo, for those of you who like shorthand, it'd be Inri the Matter of Krista Hemming. Um, if, if they decide to go there, they'll probably try to uh, like uh, go to arbitration of some sort, alternative dispute resolutions, where they'll try to uh, use a... a like a retired judge or somebody to uh, look at all the facts and everything and, you know, work things out in a less structured, less formal environment that's less expensive than a trial. Anyway, um, yeah, once it, once it goes to, uh, once it actually gets past that stage, if they, uh, if they can't, if they can't do it through arbitration or settlement or anything like that, then, then it'll go to an actual trial. It's like a, it's like a civil trial. Um, and in, in the civil trial, it's just going to be, um, it's just going to be the state bar is going to be the plaintiff essentially. And the only other difference really between it and a normal civil trial is instead of preponderance of the evidence, they have to, prove it uh, by a clear and convincing standard. So it's just a slightly higher standard of proof. Anyway, um, long, and, long and the short of it is that uh, that poor gal that Earl's requesting everybody email flood has no say in this. Um, she's, she's not the, the chief counsel for the California State Bar. She has no decision-making authority on how this case progresses. Um, and it's not a matter of public outcry. Again, it's going to be a matter of, uh, it's going to be a matter of what the proof, what, what proof there is. You know, it's trials are not, trials are not matters of public opinion. There are, there are rules in place. If those rules are violated then, and you could show that they've been violated, then that's, that's how you get a conviction or a disbarment or a punishment of any sort. It wouldn't be a conviction, but it would be a dis disbarment or a monetary sanction or a suspension or something along those lines. So anyway, uh, Earl's full of shit. He says he has all sorts of documents that he hasn't turned over yet. Uh, he's got a signed complaint. He's got uh, videos where Hemming, where Felipe Hemming is claiming that he's representing Earl. Um, I'm sure they're on the thumb drive with the uh, Leon Valley stuff. I'm not convinced by them. 
Uh, he says he has another video coming out Monday or the middle of next week. Uh, we've heard this song and dance before. It's going to be another nothing burger like this one was, where Earl just sits there and makes a ton of allegations with zero supporting evidence. Um, it's just it's just not very convincing. So, I mean, it was it was fun to listen to him accuse me of trying to shut his channel down and accuse me of trying to uh, to take down his PayPal. I mean, I thought that was cute. Um, I'm, I'm the guy who is against those things, even though a lot of the motherfuckers around here who watch me and who um, are in my Discord are absolutely peachy fucking keen with it, but I am not. It is censorship. Hi, stop pulling. I see him. We're waiting for him to go. Anyway, um, well, since, since there's a little traffic jam up ahead, there's some puppies that are pulling a young lady around on her bike. And she was having issues, uh, but they're going again. So it looks like we're good. Nope, come on, we're going this way. We're going this way. You're not going to chase them either. I know you want to. Uh, since we're going to be slow walking until... Oh, did she crash again? Nope, oh, she's back up going. <laughs> All right, uh, we got a little bit of time. Uh, I saw Virgo Triad did a video on uh, common law, and it's a nice video. It's not entirely, eh, but it's a nice video. I think it's a lot. It's a lot simpler to explain the difference between common law and statutory law. It's so simple. Um, common law exists where there are no, where there is some injustice or some need to have a a thing decided. And there was no statutory authority in place. As soon as there is a statute, it supersedes any existing common law. It, it replaces it. So there is no, there is no alternative common law. And what there, there are very few states that have common law as criminal law. Very few states. I think Virginia has some common law crimes. There might be some other ones. Uh, but, but typically, most states have codified them. And that's so people can see, like, if, if you do X, this is the punishment that will happen. Now, now you've seen it. It's on paper. So you've, you've kind of been given notice of it. So you can avoid breaking this law. The only, the only things that are really left is there are... A few causes of action, uh, civil causes of action, like some things that are in tort. Uh, I know California has some uh, some causes of action that are they're still common law. You won't you won't find them in a statute anywhere, although a lot of them have been codified by statute or altered by statute. Um, but causes of action are are the only places that are left where you'll you'll really see them, and the other place is in procedures. Federally, if it's a procedural issue, then they can have common law. If it's a non-procedural issue, then there are a few other caveats, like uh, if, it, if it makes it more likely for people to forum shop to get into a federal court because of the advantages you gain from their little common law rules, then, then it's, not a valid, it's not a valid common law rule. But in, uh, in federal courts, you know, it's 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 little procedural things like the number of jurors you get, the number of of uh, of uh, strikes that you can get on jurors. You know, how many jurors you can uh, you can strike? How many days you have to file X response? The form of the response? Um, how many pages you're allowed to have in the response? It's little simple things that you can do procedurally that that there's no statute on. It's just the courts came up with that rule because they needed a rule for it. So if somebody is saying, you know, common law allows me to do this or I'm under the common law, they're, they're talking nonsense. As soon as there's a statute in place, it overrides, it supersedes the common law and the common law ceases to be relevant. That's why you see the courts stop ruling on, on it as a common law issue. They, they are bound to use the statutes if the statutes exist because that represents the will of the legislature and we are a we are a republic 
Every state is a republic. Every state has a legislative body. Every state has a, an executive body. And every state has a judicial body. And the legislative body is responsible for making the laws. The judicial body sometimes has to make laws because the legislative body left a hole. They, they didn't tell you how to figure something out. They didn't tell you how to do X. They didn't tell you what the, uh, you know, what makes something, um, what, what are the actual factors you have to look at to determine something is inciting an immediate breach of the peace. Well, the legislature just said it has to incite an immediate breach of the peace. And so you don't know exactly what that means. And so the court has to step in and define those terms. That's common law. And if, this, if the legislative body doesn't like it, they can go ahead and change that. They can insert defining language into the statute that will override the common law and basically make the entire line of cases on that common law interpretation essentially invalid. You could, they're no longer useful to determine new cases because the statute has replaced, it has superseded the common law interpretations. So that's all it is. It's not, it's not a body of law. You can't, you can't find it in a code book. You, you find examples of it in cases. It is written in cases, um, but it's not, it's not codified in, in any like volume, I guess practice guides would codify it, but they're not, you know, official. So eh, there you go. So yeah, the difference, the difference between common law and statutory law, the statutory law is made by the legislative body. It overrides, it supersedes any common law. Common law is made by judges, and they can only make it where there is a gap in the statutory law, where there is a void in the statutes that they need to fill in order to be able to implement the, the goals of the legislative body. They, they don't get to just make shit up ad hoc. It's a, it's a process. Anyway... I guess I'm good. Thanks for watching. Um, have a great, have a great Saturday morning. I hope Earl keeps flapping his line maker because this is just fucking hilarious. <laughs>